You know that friend of yours who is a bit different, a bit peculiar, who is very shy or too honest, sometimes seeming rude? Well, that friend of yours might be autistic, and that is the topic of today's video. 10 Signs of Mild Autism in Adults At the end of the video, you can take a 10-question test to see if you identify with the spectrum. But is there a difference between autism in adults and in children? Yes. First, because those who reached adulthood without a diagnosis have a milder condition. Secondly, the autistic person, like everyone else, develops as they grow and learn to mask the signs. In this video, you will understand a bit more about this and maybe identify these characteristics in a friend, family member, or even yourself. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our health tips and activate the bell to receive notifications. Share this knowledge with as many people as possible. And tell me, do you know someone with autism? Do you have a friend or family member who fits? Or are you autistic yourself? Where in the world are you from? Write it down below. Let's go! One of the graphs that impacted me the most was the enormous growth of autism in recent years worldwide. And when I say enormous, I'm not kidding. In the 70s, 1 in 10,000 people was diagnosed with autism. In 1995, these numbers grew to 1 in 1,000 people. In 2002, this number was 1 in 150. And now the statistic is 1 in 54 live births. Does this mean that soon everyone will be autistic? No. The incidence of autism may have increased due to our diet, pollution, the age of parents who are having children later. But also, and most importantly, we have learned to recognize autism better and make the diagnosis. In the 70s or 80s, only those individuals with greater difficulties adapting to daily life and greater need for support were diagnosed as autistic. Those were extreme cases. Many of those with milder conditions reached adulthood without a diagnosis. They were labeled as weird, naive, discreet, strange, quiet, shy. They might have received other psychiatric diagnoses, without knowing that autism was the root cause. And I bet that after watching this video, you will suspect this condition in many acquaintances or who knows, even in yourself. So stay until the end to take the test. But what is autism? Autism is nothing more than a diverse neurological condition characterized by deficiencies in communication and social interaction. This means they can think, communicate, perceive, and interact with the world and themselves differently. To make it clearer, Let's make an analogy. Imagine our brains are like cell phones. Most devices use the Android system. This is the most common, typical operating system. That's why people with this more common brain function are called neurotypical. A much smaller number of people use iPhones. And their operating system is iOS, so we will call them atypical. Some apps that work well on Android may not work the same way on iOS and vice versa. It does not mean that one phone is better than the other, only that they are different. And even using the same operating system, different devices have varied characteristics. Your cell phone from 10 years ago cannot be compared with today's. In the same way, neurotypicals are not all the same, just as autistics are not either. That's why we talk about the autism spectrum, which is a continuum. There are people with many symptoms and others with so few characteristics that even specialists may disagree about the diagnosis. But of course, there are some characteristics that, when present, can alert us to the possibility of autism. Remembering that to fit the spectrum, the person does not need to have all the characteristics I will mention here. It also does not mean that if you have two or three characteristics, you can be considered autistic. The diagnosis will depend not only on the number, but also on the intensity of the signs and how much they impact the individual's life. The definitive diagnosis should be made by a specialist, such as a neurologist, psychiatrist, or neuropsychologist. But considering the possibility already makes all the difference. And if you recognize a friend or family member as autistic, you can understand them better and help them have a better quality of life. So, what are the 10 common characteristics of people on the autism spectrum? Tenth characteristic, hypersensitivity to sounds, smells, and textures. The person often notices small sounds that others do not perceive. It is not about better hearing or a better sense of smell. It's something different, a perception. 
Neurotypical people usually do not get bothered by low and continuous sounds like, for example, the noise of the air conditioner, the ticking of the clock, or chewing. They can hear it, but soon they stop noticing it. People on the autism spectrum can be extremely bothered by these same sounds. Autistics are also often bothered by clothing tags and the textures of fabrics or foods. Hence, this characteristic of being hypersensitive to sounds, smells, textures. Ninth characteristic. They focus more on details than the whole. That story. They can focus on the tree, but not see the forest. There are autistics who can describe in detail the nose of an individual, but cannot recognize the same person after seeing them only once. This is another characteristic. Eighth characteristic, attachment to routines. The person with autism spectrum can get very upset when interrupted and likes to follow routines. For example, always following the same order to get ready in the morning, the same route to work, always eating the same breakfast. They are extremely attached to rules and routines and can become very nervous if they have to deviate from that routine. Additionally, they may get more stressed if they have to divide their attention between two tasks, such as paying attention to what the teacher says and copying from the board. Seventh characteristic, difficulty. Reading between the lines when someone speaks, as people on the autism spectrum have difficulty perceiving nuances caused by intonation or nonverbal language. They also tend to interpret everything literally. Thus, they have difficulty understanding ironies or certain jokes with double meanings. And this can make them feel resentful for not understanding the real intention of the person who spoke. Sixth characteristic, difficulty making eye contact. Do you know someone who avoids looking you in the eyes when talking to you? Some autistics can even look into your eyes, but it is uncomfortable and exhausting for them. There are people who say they even feel a kind of physical pain when they do it. Fifth characteristic. They find it difficult to understand people's intentions, sometimes being extremely naive. The person on the autism spectrum may have difficulty putting themselves in the other's shoes and understanding their motivation. There is the case of the Italian volleyball player who spent 15 years thinking he was dating Alessandra Ambrosio and spent millions of riais sometimes going without food, to transfer money to the scammer. He only talked to the supposed girlfriend by phone or messages, never cheated on her and never suspected anything. Since autistics are also very sincere and literal, they find it difficult to hide what they think and, therefore, cannot imagine that others may not act the same way. Fourth characteristic, difficulty perceiving what the other person is thinking or feeling just by looking at their face. The person is angry or sad, and they can't realize it. In tests where the person must recognize the emotions of others just by looking at their image, they usually perform worse than neurotypicals of the same age unless they have received training to identify these patterns. If the girlfriend is upset with him, for example, and has a sullen face, the autistic may not realize she is angry unless the person says so clearly. Third characteristic, the person is very antisocial. They do not like participating in group meetings and get very nervous in these situations. This does not mean that autistics do not like making friends. They do, and they even try. But the lack of social skills makes it difficult for them to be accepted by the group. The fact that they do not feel accepted causes a certain social anxiety, which makes interaction even more difficult. Additionally, their auditory and visual hypersensitivity makes very noisy environments with many people and or many lights extremely stressful. They end up avoiding parties and, when they have to attend such events, they feel exhausted. Second characteristic, hyperfocus on things involving technology, scientific knowledge, instruments, tools, etc. That is, activities that do not involve people. It's not enough for the person to be interested in these topics. It's a very intense interest, almost an addiction. The person only wants to read about it, talk about it, etc. This hyperfocus often makes the autistic person a specialist in their area of interest. This can also be an advantage in the workplace. Many companies in Silicon Valley hire only autistics for certain positions because they are well above average. First characteristic, being very sincere, they can seem rude or childish. 
They find it very difficult to perceive what is and is not appropriate to say in each situation. If not guided, they may, for example, say that someone's clothes look ugly or make comments about intimate matters at the dinner table. Do you want to take the test now? Do you think you fit the autism spectrum? Take a paper and a pen. To take the test, the one I will do is the AQ-10, which is a reduced version of the most validated test with 50 questions. But this one is also validated. Number from 1 to 10. You will have to divide your paper into four columns. Completely agree. That is 100% of the time. Partially agree. Most of the time, almost always. Partially disagree. Almost never. Or completely disagree. It will never happen. Let's go. 1. I often notice sounds that other people do not perceive. Think of the air conditioner. Does it always bother you while no one else cares? Mark your note on the paper. Completely agree, partially agree, partially disagree, or completely disagree. Question 2. I usually focus more on the whole picture rather than on small details. Do you see the forest or focus more on the trees? Again, give your note. 3. I find it easy to do more than one thing at a time. Give your note. Can you always do it sometimes, almost never, or never? 4. If I am interrupted, I can easily return to what I was doing. You were writing, the phone rings. Can you get back quickly now, or is it very difficult? Were you watching a movie? Do you need to start over? Give your note. 5. I find it easy to read between the lines when someone is talking to me. Can you recognize if that person is interested in you, or sad, or in a bad mood? Give your note. 6. I know when I am boring someone with my conversation. Are you talking about a specific topic and realize that the other person doesn't like the subject and you change it? Or do you not notice anything and keep talking? Give your note. 7. When I read a story, I have difficulty predicting the intentions of the characters. It could be a movie. Do you know that character is bad? Or did you understand that the other character is in love with the protagonist? 8. I like to collect information about categories of things. Cars, birds, trains, plants, etc. Do you have a deep interest in something? When you search on Google, do you always investigate that topic? 9. I find it easy to discover what people think or feel just by looking at their face. Do you glance and already know what the person is thinking or feeling? And lastly, 10. I find it difficult to understand people's intentions. Can you not understand why a person is doing something? Can you never see the malice in things? Give your note. How to add up the points of the autism test. Now we will add up the points. How to do it. For four questions, 1, 7, 8, and 10, if you fully or partially agree, it may indicate autism. For the other six questions, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 9, disagreement may indicate signs of autism. If you marked completely disagree or partially disagree, it may be a sign of autism. You will give one point if you fully or partially agreed on questions 1, 7, 8, and 10. And you will give one point if you fully or partially disagreed on questions 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 9. And now, if you had many points, having signs of autism does not mean you are autistic. According to the test, scores of six or more can be indicative of autism. No single test is entirely conclusive, and the AQ-10 you just took is not very comprehensive. But higher scores may justify a more in-depth investigation. If you scored six or more, see a specialist for a more thorough evaluation. Did you like the video? Remember to subscribe, and see you in the next video. Thank you very much.